you guys what's happening so I have a small project I gotta work on here for a customer and uh, I gotta build a phone system and a predictive dialer so if you're not familiar with a predictive dialer it's sort of like an automated dialer they make out, outbound calls, inbound calls, voice drops, voice on list drops but uh, yeah if you're new to my channel IT is actually what I do for a living it's not just you know playing with 3D printers and cars and whatever else you know it it's actually IT so yeah so I got, I got to build an Elastix phone system and I also need to uh, it's a USB drive but I also need to uh, build this particular dialer so we got a couple servers here uh, these are Dell R420s and uh, these are great servers I mean you can get these pretty cheap on eBay uh, and they're actually awesome servers let me show you I'll go through the specs of these things but um, yeah, for super cheap, under, under 200 bucks, you know. Um, this isn't, we didn't have any hard drives, but I actually, we, uh, got some solid state drives. So we're going to do, uh, some mirrored drives. So it's going to be two mirrored, uh, one terabyte SSD drives. Here are the caddies. But let me show you the specs on this server real fast. So it's dual process, dual Xeon, uh, 32 gig of RAM, integrated RAID controller. And uh, we've done it power supplies. But yeah, these were under 200 bucks each, so that's an incredible deal. And you can obviously expand it. If you wanted to actually have like a storage server, you could have, have those eight total uh, 2.5 inch drive bays. So, all right, so I'm gonna get this going and uh, get the SSD drives in there. And uh, oh yeah, it also has a remote access card, a Dell uh, iDRAC. So yeah, this is gonna be going in a data center. So. Uh, climate control data center and I think you've seen that in some of my previous videos but yeah it's gonna be a phone system and a predictive dialer and actually I'm running Elastix I'll show you that but uh, Elastix uh, they stopped making it got bought out a few years ago but Elastix was just a nice it was a really nice phone system based on free PBX and the uh, core is actually asterisk it's an open source phone system if you're not familiar with that I think I've made a few videos in the past about that but um, yeah, I've installed hundreds of Astro systems, so, you know, I mean, b uh, five years ago, before, uh, you know, hosted VoIP phone systems, uh, I mean, that's what I did, I built call centers, so, uh, you know, on Cisco, uh, mainly Cisco, but I also did a lot of these Astro space systems, but, yeah, but people stopped buying phone systems, you know, everybody started going hosted, so, this whole market, like, evaporated. All right, cool. So I get this going. Yeah, this customer had an existing phone system from like, I think I installed the phone system probably like ten or fifteen years ago. I'm not sure, but we just been upgrading over the years. But all right, cool. Enough rambling. I'll get this going. All right, so I'm gonna take out these little drive things here and put these in here. One of the issues I might run into is that, because I'm actually going to install an old version of this phone system, which actually runs an old version of Linux. It's actually a CentOS Linux, and I think it's 5 or 6. It's been a couple of years since I've installed this, but um, my issue is, in the past, is that when you install old versions of Linux on a newer server, uh, and then it's usually the RAID controller drivers. It, de it won't see the RAID controller. So I definitely don't want to custom compile a kernel, so... If I can't get Elastix on here, then I'm going to go get the latest version of FreePBX, but because the, the customer already had Elastix on it, um, it's easier to back up and restore. But, um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm, Elastix got bought out by a company called 3CX, and they kind of killed their project because they tried to get everybody to buy their, their Windows-based phone system, their paid version of it, which 3CX is awesome. I've installed a few of them, you know. It's cool, cool software, but, yeah, it's kind of... Kind of uh, Hey, when they do that, you know, they, they, they same thing happened to a, a product called Trixbox a long time ago. A paid company actually bought it and then tried to like convert all their users to like a paid subscription. So, all right, so I uh, put this USB drive in here. I get the power on here, keyboard, mouse. Or actually, I don't need a mouse. It's Linux. It's all console based. Um, all right, power. So when I first fired this up, I actually got to log into the uh, RAID, and I configured this in RAID one. And if I didn't mention, these are uh, one terabyte, uh, these Evo 860 drives. But 
um, if you're, I'm sure if you're an IT guy and you've installed this phone system, then you're probably aware that um, these things actually like to install from a CD-ROM. Actually, these things actually do have CD-ROM. Um, it's kind of unusual to see on a server as CD-ROMs, but um, at least a newer server. But uh, yeah, there's always an, an issue, especially with the old version of older versions of Linux, booting from a USB flash drive. So sometimes I have to log in the command line and do some uh, pre-boot configuration. All right, first fire up. Cool, booted, so we're getting some video. Uh, like I said this should have 32 gig of memory in it, and we'll have to do the initial configuration. All right, so I gotta hit operations, convert to RAID cable. Yes. All right, now I need to hit F2, create configuration. I want to hit. Um, and I want to go back here and, um, sorry, I'm trying to do this one hand. Uh, RAID 1, I name this uh, boot and tab. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry, I forgot this got deselected. Okay, boot, there we go. There we go. Yes. Let me go back, F2 operations, um, initialization, initialization, you're just basically building the array, yes, alright, um, or if you want to exit, uh, let's, yes, control delete, I'm going to come back, I'm going to go into the, uh, it should actually auto, auto, automatically check for the USB drive, but I'm going to go back in the BIOS to make sure that the uh, SanDisk is the first one to boot. This is an older version of Linux. I'm going to disable the. Uh, I'm going to keep it legacy uh, legacy BIOS versus the uh, UEFI. Yeah, because it can actually have issues booting. All right, so by default, it wants to boot to the new RAID drive I created. So I'm going to bring up the USB drive, the Cruiser Fit fan disk. Yeah, one thing I can't stand on some of these Dell servers is this lifecycle controller, man. This thing, I've actually had it where it actually like. A lot of these servers that I work on are actually remote, so when I reboot them, it gets hung up on the lifecycle controller, or it takes a really long time to boot up. So uh, yeah, I can't stand that stuff. I, I just disable it. It's in the iDRAC settings. All right, so this actually is the last version of Elastics I made, 2.5. something. But like I was saying, it's always an issue booting from a USB drive with this older version of Linux. So we'll see what happens. I'm getting the notorious cannot find Kickstarter file. So the problem with that is that um, when you install the Linux OS on the flash drive, it thinks it's a CD-ROM. It doesn't think it's actually like a like a USB stick. So as it boots up, it's telling the the flash drive is telling the Elastics to look at the CD-ROM drive. So I got to tell it to go back and look at our local hard drive, which is the uh, thing here. So you got to go on to ISO Linux here. And then go into uh, modify the OSO Linux config. And as you can see here, so as it boots up, it's pointing to this right here, the CD ROM. And I'm going to change that to go back and look at its internal hard drive here. And then uh, paste it. I'm already actually have the command, and that's the command right there. So look at, go, go, instead of actually going to the CD ROM drive, go back and look at the actual flash drive. By default, it does this when you flash it, you know, so there's something you can do about it. So you have to go back and save it all. All right. All right, so there you go. So what's funny is I, I noticed that it's not every single computer BIOS. It's just, it's, it's, I, it's it happens usually a lot with Dell servers, but you know, like an Asus or some other motherboard, like a regular like desktop motherboard, I don't always actually have that problem. But it's definitely always usually either HP or Dell servers, so cool. All right, guys, that's it. So, cool servers, good deal. Got uh, PBX, got the dialer installed. All right, cool.